When writing an expression in exponential notation, we have to count the number of times. In this case, 2 is being used as a factor. It's being used 6 times, so we write 2 to the 6th power. In the next example, negative 2 is being used as a factor 3 times. It reads as negative 2 cubed. In this case, we have a negative 2 times 2. This reads as the opposite of 2 squared. The only time we can use the term negative is when it's in parentheses, or it's to the first power, like in the problem, negative 2 times 2. Other than that, we have to use the wording of opposite instead of negative. An odd number of negatives being multiplied will result in a negative value. An even number of negatives being multiplied will result in a positive value. In our first case, we have zero negative numbers being multiplied, so the result is a positive 32. In our next example, we have four negatives, which is even, so our result again is a positive 16. In our third example, we have two negatives being multiplied, which is even, so our result is a positive 9. In our fourth example, we have one negative being multiplied, which is odd, Therefore, our result is a negative 81. And in our fifth example, we have three negatives being multiplied. Therefore, our result will be a negative 64 because three is odd. When evaluating rational numbers, it works the same way. We're going to write four fifths as a factor three times. Then we just have to multiply the numerators, and multiply the denominators, and the result in this case is 64 over 125. Even if it has a negative, it works the same way. We're going to write it as a factor three times. Next, we'll multiply the numerators, multiply the denominators, and the result will be negative 64 over 125. But if the negative is outside, not in the parentheses, we never repeat the negative. It stays outside until you have it completely simplified. Remember, all three of these ratios are equal. It doesn't matter if the negative is to the side, on the numerator, or the denominator. All three are the same. We read the first one as negative 4 fifths. The second one has negative 4 over 5, and the third has 4 over negative 5. But remember, they all have the same value. Let's make sure we can read these verbal expressions and know the value of each of them. In the first one, it is read as 12 to the first power, which is 12. In our second one, we read this as 6 squared. You can read it as 6 to the second power, but we prefer you say 6 squared. And remember, when using this, we can use the caret key, which indicates this is to the second power. We're raising it, and the value is 36. In this case, we would prefer you read this as 2 tenths cubed. You can always read it as 2 tenths to the third power, but we prefer 2 tenths cubed. In this case, the value would be 0 0.008, or 8 thousandths. Now, in this case, I read it as the opposite of 7 to the 4th power. In certain texts, you may even see them say the opposite of the quantity 7 to the 4th power. The quantity is a little bit of an overkill. As long as you say in my class the opposite of 7 to the 4th power, you are correct. Now remember that negative will stay outside. We want to know what 7 to the 4th power is and then write the opposite of that. In this case, it would be negative 2,401. Now, since we have parentheses around this negative number, we can read this as negative 8 to the 6th power. Since the exponent is even, we know a result would be positive, and that's 262,144. What operation? Which operation do we always perform last? Hopefully, you are saying addition or subtraction. There is no need to always follow gems when a term is separated by addition or subtraction. Order operation is really meant for operations within a term and always 
subtracting or adding last. Remember in on operation GEMS, G stands for the grouping symbols, E for exponents, M for division or multiplication left to right. Remember multiplication does not come before division. It's the first one we see from left to right. And then the S stands for subtraction or addition. Again, from left to right. Addition does not come before subtraction. It's the first one you see when reading from left to right. Let's evaluate. When we see the expression a squared plus c cubed, the first thing you should do is write it with parentheses. Now let's take a look to see what's the value of a. Well, that value is 4. And then what's the value of c? And it's over here, which is negative 3. We'll place the a with 4, and we'll replace the c with a negative 3, but always within those parentheses. Now this next step is unnecessary, but I just want to make sure I state that 4 squared means 4 times 4, and negative 3 cubed is negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3. If you want to skip this step, it's fine. Remember, 4 squared is 4 times 4, which is 16, and negative 3 cubed would be negative 27, because a negative times a negative is a positive, and then a positive times a negative is a negative. Or we can say since we have three negatives, which is odd being multiplied, our result will be a negative number. So we write 16 minus 27. You may want to use a t-chart when we're subtracting. In this case, the 16 is positive, the 27 is negative. Now we just have to move the small one over and subtract. In this case, 7 minus 6 is 1, 2 minus 1 is 1. Since we're underneath the negative side, we know our result is negative. So our answer is negative 11. First, write it just using parentheses. Now let's replace our values. B is 2. A is 4. And C is negative 3. This step in green can be skipped. 2 squared is 2 times 2 which will give us 4. And then 4 times 4 is 16. And then a negative 16 times a negative 3, that will give us a positive 48. And 4 plus 48 is 52. In this case, it's a little bit more complicated. Notice we already have our parentheses. Due to this fact, when we write our first step, we're going to change this parentheses into a bracket. If you want to keep it with parentheses, you may do so. But it helps to organize our steps a little bit better. So now when we take a look at a, the value of a is 4. Notice we have two a's, so when we substitute, we're going to substitute it in for both a's. The next we have b, and notice we have two b's. We have a b, b here and a b here. So when we evaluate, we'll substitute it in for both terms. And the next one is a c, and c is negative 3, we'll use that. So again, right now, I don't have to wait to do this and do what's in grouping because it's separated by additional subtraction, in this case, subtraction. So 4 times 2 is 8, and then 2 times negative 3 is negative 6, and 4 cubed. So this is the opposite of 4 cubed. 4 cubed is 64. The opposite would just be a minus 64. Now you can leave the brackets, it doesn't matter which one you use. A lot of people, when they're simplifying inside, they change it to parentheses. But if you wanted to leave it with brackets, you can. Now, negative 6 minus 64. We can use a t-chart. The 6 is negative. Since there's a minus in front of the 64, the 64 is also negative. So now when we add, 6 plus 4 is 10. 1 plus 6 is 7. Since we're underneath our negative side, our answer would be a negative 70. Now, since we have minus a negative, we're going to change that to 8 plus 70, and 8 plus 70 is 78. I hope you enjoyed.